Wheaties presents Dimension X. Adventures in time and space. Transcribed in future tense. Dimension X. X, 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 X. On stage tonight, Dimension X. Another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Say, tomorrow's Saturday, you know, and maybe you don't have to show up for work. A whole swell summer day for just what you want to do. So, start off with a big holiday bowl of Wheaties at breakfast, and just see how it sparks up the morning. Wheaties are whole wheat, you know, and I don't have to tell you what good, sturdy nourishment that is. So, if you've got fish to catch, or golf to play, or maybe a hike to take, just see how Wheaties can make it all a lot more fun. You know why? Why, lady, mister, it's just because you feel good when you've had your Wheaties. Those two-fisted little whole wheat flakes are loaded with vitamins and minerals. And so are you when you've had your Wheaties. Go on, try them. Just you see how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. When the first space rocket lands on Mars, what will we find? Will we be welcomed with open arms, or will the Martians treat us as invaders? Only one thing is certain. Someday a giant metal ship will take off from Earth to travel through the black velocities, the silent gulfs of space, to descend at last into the darkness of the upper Martian atmospheres. And on that day, man will finally know the answers. The day we first land on Mars. Now hear this. Now hear this. Approaching critical deceleration. Fasten gravity suits. Stand by the land. Mr. Lustig, what do you make of the terrain? There seems to be a heavy ground, Miss Captain. We won't be able to use our infrared lights. And we'll have to come in on radar. Wasn't that a little risky, sir, landing in the dark? I'd rather run the danger of a blind landing, Lieutenant, than come in without the cover of darkness. Remember, we don't know what kind of reception is waiting for us down there. Airspeed 500. Altitude now 4,000. Bridge to engine room. Stand by for deceleration. Engine room, aye. Fire forward tubes one and three. Aye. Skids down. Skids check. Altitude 500. Four. 350. Three. Up a point now. All right, let's set her down. Look out! <laughs> Cut the power. Master's pipe battle stations. Aye, right, sir. I'll secure it, sir. Well, we're on Mars. April 20th, 1987. 4.33, Greenwich time. Enter that in the log, Masters. Aye, right, sir. Well, gentlemen, it's less than two hours till dawn. As soon as it's light, we'll send out a landing party. Masters, get me an all-over hookup. All set, Captain. Now hear this. Now hear this. All right, men. The smoking lamp is lit. We're 17 men on an alien world. And it's up to us whether we ever get home again. Next few hours should tell the story. And I want instant obedience to all commands. I'll court-martial the first man who doesn't jump to when he's ordered. And one other thing. We may be on Mars, but this is still a United States naval vessel. Officers will conduct a personal and weapons inspection in one hour. That's all. Inspection, Captain. Now? Mr. Lustig, we've got an hour and a half to sweat out before we find out what's outside that airlock. I'd rather have a man worried about his stripes about what's waiting outside on Mars. Now hear this landing party report to forward airlock. Captain Black, Lieutenant Hingston, Lieutenant Lustig, and Dr. Horst report immediately to forward airlock. It is now landing time, minus five. Sounds like they're paging us, Hingston. You ready, Dr. Horst? Yes. Ready as I will ever be. Oh, come on. Let's report to the airlock. Where are us to go? 
Hey, where's the captain? Who knows? What difference does it make? Just want to get it over with, that's all. Has anybody, uh, got a cigarette? I think you're smoking too much, Lieutenant Lustig. Are you nervous? Lay off, will you, Horst? Wondering what's hidden outside underneath that ground mist? Very unusual planet, Mars. Why? It has an atmosphere. Wonderful thing, an atmosphere. Where you find one, you find life. You mean Martians? What do you think they'll look like? Who knows? Intelligent life can take many forms. You mean they may have green skins and eyes on stalks or something? A comic book conception is possible. Or they may have developed to a point that is far beyond us. Perhaps they have a science that can produce weapons far more dangerous than our atomic missiles. You think we may have to fight our way out? After all, we are invaders. Now hear this landing time minus two. Landing all time right, minus All right, all right, we heard this. I know what I'd like to find outside that airlock. Good old Illinois. <laughs> you ever been there, Lustig? Only in Chicago. Well, you ought to see my hometown. Green lawns, big white houses. Sounds like my hometown. My grandmother used to have one of those iron deers on the lawn. Every Halloween, we'd paint it another color. One time, we painted it black and white like a Holstein cow. <laughs> Where does your family live, Horst? I have no family. When I was a child, they were gassed to death in the Dachau concentration camp. That's tough. Oh, it has its advantages. I have no ties on Earth. Nothing to lose now. I imagine I'm the only one on board who is free to enjoy our present peculiar position. All right, Lustig. You can button it up now. Aye, sir. Now, gentlemen. In one minute, we'll be the first men to set foot on Mars. Quite an honor, eh? As long as the medals are not awarded posthumously. Still uneasy, Dr. Horst? Captain Black, I've been uneasy ever since I can remember. On Earth and on Mars. Now, yeah. 30 seconds. Give me the intercom phone, Lusty. Masters? Aye, sir. Battle stations to be manned till we return. If we're not back in two hours... I want no rescue party sent out. Blast off and save the ship, you understand? Aye, sir. All right, gentlemen. Five seconds. Four. Three. <coughs> two. One. Lustig, open the outer airlock. Fresh air. Let's go. Hold it now. It's too dark to move fast. Quiet, isn't it? Not even a wind. You can't see anything through this ground. Mess. Quiet. We don't know what's out here. Come on. What the? Quiet, Captain. I, I could swear that sounded like a rooster. I don't hear it anymore. A very unlikely sound. A rooster crowing on Mars? Kingston. Aye, sir. Set that machine gun 25 yards to the flank. We'll stay here till the ground mist lifts. Aye, aye, sir. What do you make of the ground, Horst? Grass. Plain grass. You could see some large foliage there where the mist stand on. What the heck is that? Kingston! Hold your fire, you fool! What? Some kind of wild animal. I hit it. I could see the tracers, but it's still standing. Come on, Horst. Doctor. Doctor, where are you? Up ahead. Admiring the wild animal. Careful, Horst. Wait for us. Don't worry, Captain. Huh. It's an iron deer. A lawn ornament. That's impossible. It's hollow. Interesting, isn't it? A whitewashed Victorian iron deer. Sitting on a lawn in the middle of Mars. I don't understand. Look around. The mist's lifting. The Captain. Look there. A house, a regular old-fashioned house. On Mars. Good Lord. I haven't seen carved scrolls and gingerbread like that in years. Look at that port swing. The geraniums. There. I told you it was a rooster, Captain. Give me the glasses, Lustig. I want to take a look through that front window. What? There's an upright piano. Some sheet music on it. Lustig, it's beautiful Ohio. Beautiful Ohio? 
That can't be. Look here, Horace. Do you think that civilizations of two planets could be identical? I don't know. That specific variety of geraniums is only 50 years old on Earth. Is it logical they should develop in Mars? How about that porch swing and that, that piano and beautiful Ohio? No, it's impossible. Captain Black, this looks like the town I was born in. Well, it looks like my hometown, too. I've thought of something, sir. It's the only solution. Maybe we're not the first ship to reach Mars from Earth. That's the only answer. That's impossible, Lister. There have been space travel that couldn't be secret. Do you have any idea what ships cost, what industrial power is needed? There's got to be some logical reason. Captain, I think perhaps we might find out. A light just went on in that house. Kingston, cover that door with the machine gun. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, horse. You ring that doorbell. There's got to be a scientific answer to all of this. There's something moving in there. Stand back, Horst. Give me a clear shot. Maybe a Martian. Can I help you? We... We, we were looking... Well, if you're selling anything, it's much too early. Uh, no, no. Wait. Wait a minute. What, uh... What town is this? What do you mean? Are you census takers? No. We're strangers here. We want to know how this town got here. Is this a game? No, no. It's not a game. We are from Earth. From where? From Earth. Do you mean out of the ground? Hey, uh, are you sure you're feeling well? Madam, we came in a flying ship across space. We're from the third planet. This is this is Mars. Now do you understand? Mars. Now, you go away now, you hear? I'll call my husband from upstairs and he'll chase you now. But go on. This is Mars, isn't it? This is Green Lake, Wisconsin, in the United States of America. Bounded on the east by the Atlantic and on the west by the Pacific. Now, 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 go away. Goodbye. Of course, do you suppose it's really possible? I've got to find out more about this. For the last time, now, go away. Pardon me, madam. What year is this? Year? Well, 1928, of course. Oh, for goodness sake. You hear that, Horst? And we know it's 1987. And we know it's Mars. Is it possible that we got fouled up, made some tremendous blunder, and circled around and landed back on Earth? In 1928? Well, maybe some switch in time or, or dimension. Could we have shifted somehow and gone backward in time? Horst, it won't hold water. It's not logical. We've checked every mile. We went past the moon and out into space. We're on Mars. Find out anything, Captain? No, we're going back to the ship till I figure out some logical explanation for all this. Lustig, out at point. Aye, sir. Hingston in the rear. Keep that gun at half load. Aye, sir. Of course, there's got to be some cold, logical solution. Captain. Captain. What? That house down the street. The white one with the green shutters. Lustig, what's the matter? I never thought. I never thought. Thank God. Thank God. Lustig. Lustig, come back here. He's running for that house. That crazy fool. After him, quick. Lustig, stop. Come down off of that porch. Grandpa! Grandpa! Lustig, what Grandma. the devil do you think you're trying? Grandma and Grandpa, it is you. Lustig, what's going on here? Albert, why, it's been so many years. How you grown, boy. Oh, it's so good to see you. Lieutenant Lustig. Oh, oh, Captain. Uh, Grandma, I want you to meet my friend. This is Captain Black. Oh. Captain, I want you to meet my grandfolks. Howdy. <laughs> Any friends of Albert's is friends of ours. How long have <laughs> you been here, Grandma? Oh, Good many years. Ever since we died. Ever since you what? Oh, yes, sir. They've been dead 30 years. What? You mean to tell me that Mars is heaven? Oh, nonsense, no. All we know is here we're alive again. And who are we to question God's infinite ways? I... Lustig, we're going back to the ship. But, Captain, I want to talk to my grandfather. Lieutenant grandfolks. Lustig, I don't like any part of this. You come back with us, I have to club you and carry you. Yeah, but, sir, there might... Heaven only knows what they've run up against back of the ship. Dimension X will continue in just a moment. Well, now let's come back to Earth for a moment. And what's more appropriate than Wheaties and baseball? You'll see what I mean as I introduce Ed Prentice, who has a special treat for you. 
Carry on, Mr. Prentice. Folks, I'd like to have you meet a good friend of mine and a prominent member of a fine little organization known as the Chicago White Sox, Mr. Lucius Benjamin Affleck. Ooh, Ed, don't say it like that. Who ever heard of a ball player named Lucius? What if I went around and called you Paul Edward Prentice? Let's just make it Ed and Luke, huh? <laughs> All right, Luke. Say, just how long have you been with the White Sox? Over 20 years, Ed. Golly, I played in darn near 2,500 games. Then it bat almost 9,000 times. Man, I'm from way back. Well, Luke, you don't look it. How do you keep up the pace, anyway? Well, Ed, I sleep good. I eat good. I eat mighty good. Feet is about four mornings a week. Those little old flakes put a lot of snap, even in an old timer like me. Must be because they're 100% whole wheat. I sure like Wheaties and milk and fruit. You know, Luke, that's exactly what I hear from a lot of ball players and plenty of other people, too. No wonder they call Wheaties the breakfast of champions. Well, thanks, Luke Appling and Ed Prentice. You know, folks, you may not be a champion ball player, but Wheaties can help you feel like one. So try them. Wheaties, that is. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. <laughs> Horst, look at that crowd around the ship. Looks like we're being welcomed with a celebration. Celebration? They've abandoned ship. Every port is open. No guard said, you, you masters. Hiya, Captain. Meet my old dad. Dad, that's Captain Black, and he's not a bad guy for an officer. Of all the... Kingston! Uh, oh, oh, what, sir? Bring that man back. Use force if you have to. Uh, I... Oh, excuse me, sir. There's my Uncle George. Kingston! I'll be right back, Captain. Uncle George! Uncle George! What the devil Don't is going... Don't understand, sir. They've all found friends and relatives. They're all here. He's right, Captain. I've counted. The whole crew is out on the crop. But I gave orders. Definite orders. I don't understand, Captain. I understand Boy. mutiny. I don't care how many relatives show up. I'll have discipline John! on... Johnny! Johnny, you old son of a gun. Edward. Edward. It's you. It can't be. <laughs> of course it is. Johnny, you old son of a gun. Ed. Edward. Dr. Horst. This is my, my brother, Edward. How do you do? Hello. It's... It's wonderful to see you, Edward. Look, I, 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 I've got to get back to my hey, ship. Hey, I almost forgot. Mom's waiting at home. Mom? And Dad, too. Mom? Dad are alive? Excuse me, Horst. I... Then you're real, Ed. <laughs> Don't I feel real? <laughs> How's that, huh? <laughs> Ed. Ed, <laughs> we've, we've got lunch for you, Johnny. <laughs> Mom's making corn fritters. Corn? Dr. Horst, haven't you found anybody? Uh, no, Captain. I have nobody. Then you come on home with me, right, Ed? Sure, you bet. Horst, you wouldn't believe it, but it's been 35 years since I had Mom's corn fritters. By George. 35 years. <laughs> And there's plenty more in the kitchen, so don't hold back, Johnny. You too, Dr. Horst. Well, Johnny, you're still in the Navy, huh? That's right, Dad. I'm in command of the ship. We're an old Navy family, Dr. Horst. All three of our boys in the service. Ed was the best pilot in the Pacific. What didn't happen, Ed? Oh, what's the difference? I'm here now. Oh, you know, it's almost perfect. All we're missing is your brother, Will. Then the whole family could be together. Well, it won't be long, Mom. Will's in charge of the XR-54. That's the next rocket coming out to Mars. Well, little Will. <laughs> when does he leave, Johnny? Takeoff's scheduled for September, but it depends on what we report. <laughs> There's no question about that now, eh? Christmas together again. That'll be something, huh? Yes, sir. -y. Well, this calls for a celebration. How about a little of the old dandelion wine, eh, Johnny? Now, Father, don't you go giving Johnny too much wine. Oh, he's a big boy now, Mother. Oh, well, sir, isn't everything just fine? Just fine. Sure, yeah. Well, Dr. Horace, what do you think of my little family? Hmm? Very nice. 
You know, I can't understand why you didn't find any folks here, Dr. Horst. It's just a shame. Everybody else is so happy. I never remembered my family, Mrs. Black. All I know is they were gassed at Dachau during the Second World War. When I was liberated, I was in a delirium three months. I cannot remember anything before then. A psychiatric phenomenon. That's terrible. Isn't there anything anybody can do? I don't want to remember. Oh. I haven't had a pleasant life. I prefer to be free of emotional entanglements. They interfere with a scientific approach. I'm sorry, Dr. Horst. Oh, I'll get it. Hey, that's our ring, long and three shorts. Oh. I remember that. Well, maybe we'd oh. better call it a night. You must be getting tired, Johnny. I'd better be going back to the ship. Oh, nonsense. You stay the night. We insist. Oh, I just couldn't rest thinking of you all alone on that ship. Oh, I'd be all right. Well, good night. Oh, wait a minute, Dr. Horst. That phone message was for you. Me? Yes, that's right. A message from Anna. Anna? I don't remember any Anna. She asked if you were better. Well, perhaps she's someone you knew at Dachau. Anna? She said she's coming over here first thing in the morning. So you'll have to stay over. Yes, well, but... Well, that settles it then. You stay here, Horst. You can bunk with me in my old room. Oh, but Johnny... We thought you'd like to be with Edward. So you could talk the way you used to. Well, we can't put Dr. Horst on the day bed. I think we'd better share the room tonight. There'll be plenty of time for talking, Ed. I guess so. Well, I suppose I'd better drop back to the ship. You know, Ed, security check. Well, why do you have to do that here? Well, I don't know. There's no good reason, I guess. <laughs> well, I suppose we skip it tonight. Oh, sure. Well, good night, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's good to have you home, Johnny. It's good to be home, Mom. Captain Black, are you asleep? No, no. I've just been thinking about what we were expecting. <laughs> Green-skinned Martians with eyes on stalks. All the time, there was only Mom and Dad and Edward waiting. Ah, it's funny what tricks your imagination can play on you. Yeah, I guess Mars is heaven, Horst. Hmm. I've been thinking about Martians, too. Yeah. <sighs> Captain, just suppose... Suppose there were Martians, and they saw us land. Suppose they thought of us as invaders. What would be the best weapon they could use against our atom bombs? I don't see what you're getting at. They would want to disarm us first. Hmm. To wipe out all suspicion. To make us feel at home. But suppose this house isn't real. Suppose the people are just images. Stolen from our own memories. By Martians. Created for us by telepathy. Hypnotism. <laughs> That's the craziest theory I ever heard. Maybe that's why there was no one for me. Because in all my life, there is no happy memory. No real love person. Well, how about that phone call from Anna? Yes. Anna. I didn't remember who she was, but I do now. I just remembered. When I was freed from Dachau, sick, delirious, I raved about a wonderful, kind nurse named Anna that took care sure, of me. There you are. It's logical. She's coming to see you tomorrow. But there was no Anna. I'd be nursed by a man. What? Anna... It was only a dream. And there's only one way they could have learned about her. By reading my subconscious mind. But that's impossible, Horst. Why? The whole crew was thinking of home. Suppose the Martians read our minds. Yes, but if, if there are Martians... If there are, they have us separated. Each man in a different house. Sleeping. Trusting. No one at the guns. I left my pistol downstairs. Do you, do you think there's something to this, Horst? It's a pet who would suspect his own mother, his grandparents. How easy. Just a knife in the heart of each sleeping man. It's impossible, Horseman. We've, we've got to get back to the ship. Listen. The crickets have stopped. Come on. 
We don't know when they change back to whatever they really are. Where are you going, John? Ed, well, we we wanted to drink a water. That's all, Ed. We... You're not thirsty, John. You don't want to drink. You don't want to drink. His face, it's changing. And his hands, he's a Martian. Run, horse. You can't Run. Get away, John. You can't get away. This way, horse. Away, horse, John. where are you? Can you hear me, Earth? This is Captain John Black, the XR-53, calling from Mars. I blocked myself in the ship, but they've crippled it. I, I can't take off or fire the guns, and they're coming for me now. The Martians! I'm all alone here. All the rest are dead. Hingston, Lustig, Dr. Horst. Poor Horst, he didn't even reach the door. <coughs> listen, listen, they're trying to break through the hull now. Edward and Mom and Dad and all the folks. But they're changing now. Melting and changing back into their Martians. Can you understand me? Martians, not men. They made us think that Mars was heaven and we fell into the trap. Can you hear me, Earth? You've got to stop the next rocket. Tell, tell my brother Will. Tell my brother Will not to come. They'll trap him too. They'll kill them all. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me, Earth? This is John Black on Mars. Hello, Earth. This is John Black on Mars. Tonight, Dimension X has presented and transcribed the Ray Bradbury story, Mars is Heaven, adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured players were Wendell Holmes as Captain Black and Peter Capel as Dr. Horse. Your narrator, Norman Rose. Music by Albert Berman, engineer Bill Chambers. Dimension X is produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King. Robert Warren speaking. In a moment, we'll tell you about next week's show. And now, here is your Wheaties man, Frank Martin. Folks, tonight we have a special guest for you. Here he is, Joel McRae. Hello, Frank Martin. I kind of expected to see a package of Wheaties sticking out of your pocket. What? Did I forget them? You must like Wheaties, <laughs> Frank. Sure, don't you? You bet. I'm joining the big parade of Wheaties programs, you know, with Tales of the Texas Rangers come Saturday night. Well, that promises to be real entertainment, Joel. I understand these are true stories of the Texas Rangers. Absolutely. Each story is straight from the Texas Ranger files. Well, we're mighty proud to have you join us, Joel, with this new program. We'll all be listening on the same NBC station Saturday night for Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Okay, Mr. McRae? Okay, partner. Good night. Good night, Joel. And friends, be sure to listen Saturday, that's tomorrow night, to Joel McRae and his new program, Tales of the Texas Rangers. And get your Wheaties, everybody. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you again to listen tomorrow night to Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. Next week, the story of the strangest case ever recorded in the files of the Bureau of Missing Persons. The case of The Man in the Moon. You'll hear the whole story next week when we venture once more into the unknown world of... Dimension X. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.